Hello everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Bibliophiles. The, the, today is going to be part one of our five-parter um, thing, which I'll be calling Dune Month, because I'm, well, quite obviously I'm reviewing the entire Dune series, of course. And uh, right now I'm going to start with the prequel trilogies. Anyway, um, first... First is the Butlerian Jihad. Now, th this uh, this trilogy takes place about 10,000 or so years before the events of the main series, the, the first book. And, of course, it's about the... which... about the event called the uh, Butlerian Jihad, the Holy War Against the Machines. Because... Um, <clears throat> Well, they, they talk about it quite a bit in the in the main series, so of course they're going to talk about it here. Of course, the main reason this whole trilogy even exists is because it's cool, but it works. So, um, like I said, like, like how the whole, uh, this thing got a, like the setting is essentially like a, a long time ago, or in the future, or whatever, and um, the... Like, the human race has gotten very decadent and become more and more reliant on machines to do everything. And then, you know, just, like, a small group of programmers have been able to, um, you know, just program their own machines and sort of, like, take over most of the em most of the worlds and make their own little empire. And eventually even they begin to grow old and they begin, like, a putting their brains into jars so they can control machines themselves, but even, like, in these uh, beings called Cymex, and then even they um, began getting a little lazy, and one of them built an artificial intelligence called Amius to run things, and eventually that guy, that Amius took over that whole empire, and be it became known as the Synchronized Worlds. Now, there's, um, there's only, like, this small... Um, the um, human-led faction called the League of Nobles, who um, have been able to hold them off for quite a while with um, the help of the scientist Theo Holtzman, who's built, who builds these um, gigantic planetary shields, which have, um, like, if the machine ship goes through this field, then it'll fry their circuitry. Now, they still send Cymex, but... You know, they've been able to take care of those guys. And, um... Eventually, um... The machines are actually able to capture one world, Gidi Prime, with the, the future home of the Harkonnens. And during this, they uh, capture one noble by the name of Serena Butler, who is uh, pregnant with, um... The, with the, the son of Xavier Harkonnen. Who um, I thought it was kind of very surreal and weird that that we're seeing a Harkonnen being portrayed as a good guy. You know, just kind of, kind of made me go, "What the heck?" And um, the <clears throat> and then he eventually meets up with the other with the Vorian Atreides, who's at first a bad guy, but eventually joins them upon seeing um, the uh, death of. Uh, Mannion's son, he's of a of a the death of Mannion Butler is the son of a Serena, because um, he's he's killed by this other robot named Erasmus who who um, I, I I don't know I don't remember why he kills her off some sort of experiment or something at it, and it, they're like you know Erasmus killing Mannion has caused Serena to go just go completely h h shit and attack and this eventually you know sort of snowballs and you know the entire planet earth rebels against the machine empire and um you know eventually serena and a few others um are able to escape and go to earth and they're able to instigate the butlerian jihad to finally declare this uh Massive war once and for all against the mach against the synchronized worlds, what they're called, and 
throughout this, there's also other subplots like uh, the Cymex trying to regain control of their empire. Um, there's the whole um, Vorin Atreides given this extended life treatment, you know, before he, like, while he's still working for the synchronized worlds. So he actually ends up fighting this war for like over almost 200 years or so. And then there's the uh, Hugh Holtzman, the scientist who's kind of uh, getting outshined by this other scientist, uh, Norma Senva, and he's deal and he's acting all angry and stuff about it, and it's causing him to get sloppy. You know, Norma Senva and her, her um, how she eventually sort of goes on to found the the Spacing Guild. Another plot involving the these uh, sorcerers of Rossack who eventually become the Bene Gesserits. And it's, and it's just like all these different origin stories of how the all of these different factions like the Guild and the Sisterhood and so forth, you know, come to be. <clears throat> and um, what, like one thing that I really enjoyed about this was the um, how it uh, builds the universe. First, of course, is um, there's this thing in the Butlerian Jihad and it's basically a um, like a glossary type deal and um, it's just like a bunch of these bunch of terms like uh, and the names of the people and talk about uh, different places locations names you know and I thought that was pretty cool, even though we see that in the first Dune novel as well. And then there's, um, in the ending of uh, Machine Crusade, we see an appendix, which is a timeline, as you can see here. And this whole thing is about... Um, is like a, the timeline of stuff that happens from the beginning of the first novel to the beginning of the second novel. And um, this whole is about, um, and I thought that was also pretty cool seeing that, that different stuff there. And um, yeah, and eventually it sort of all culminates in the, with the Battle of Carino, for, which is the third of the trilogy and it's about the they're finally taking down the machine empire and all that other stuff and um and the whole de degradation of the Harkonnen name and how they eventually became you know and how the whole rivalry came about <clears throat> of course um when you think about like there are also some this uh, kind of raises a lot of uh, questions when you eventually get to the to the uh, other books such as uh, um, Hunters of Dune and Sandworms of Dune, which I'll be discussing in part three. And, um, you know, these are pretty glaring questions. Like, uh, well, I'll, like, I'll talk about them in part three, but, <clears throat> you know, just stuff that kind of bugs the crap out, stuff that really doesn't, fit that well and um, yeah anyway um, it's all very nice and but overall I really enjoyed it like I said there's like a few stuff that kind of bugged the crap out of me not, not really it was part of the main trilogy itself but when you get into the other installments in the main series <clears throat> specifically the last two and um like even though the only reason this trilogy even exists is because it's cool I can or mainly because it's cool that's the main reason but I guess but I can forgive that because it is cool there's a lot of cool stuff that happens in here no oh, oh right there's also uh, another lesser plot about the f origin of the Fremen and so forth I never really much cared for that but overall, 
yeah, it was just an okay um, overall. It was still a pretty great series. But like I said, the whole Fremen origin story, like I didn't really much care for that and it just felt like it was just slapped on. Didn't really have much that much to do with the whole the main plot that I actually was interested in, which is the massive interstellar war, but it was still a, yeah, yeah, it just wasn't interesting. Overall it was um I'm gonna give this about four out of five. A definite recommendation for anybody and overall just a very enjoyable trilogy you know lots of fun lots of action yeah now for the uh, prelude to dune which was um, this one is also of course an, um, this one unlike the this one takes place like right before the, or like 20 or so years before the, the um, events of the novel series. And this thing um, raises, like, it, it's made for the explanation of more um, recent stuff, like uh, why Raban is called the Beast, um, the rise of Duke Leto to Dukedom. Um, and uh, like the birth of Paul Atreides, the birth of um, Fade, and how he came around, and um, how Duke Leto met Jessica, and fell in, and they both fell in love, and so forth. There's also this really big plot going on about um, this uh, friends, this the friends of Leto, these other nobles who come from the planet Ix, and it's been like taken over by Sardukar, so they can. So they can, so the emperor can, you know, because he has like this deal with the Tleilaxu and they want to like take over the planet and use that, the resources and technology of Ix to you know, like make some sort of substitution and spice stuff. And um, the whole thing revolves around him trying to get his, and the whole thing is like him to, reacting with his friends from Ix and eventually putting them back into power as kind of earning the no the uh, admiration of the other houses <clears throat> there's one thing that I really love about this trilogy is like once again you know it's the main reason is just because it's cool but I love it because it's it expands on the Dune universe so much more than even the entirety of the main series. And um, I guess one good example would be maps. See, um, there are two maps that they show you. There's the map of the his first is like the map of course of Dune, which you see in the original Dune novel. But then they show the northern and the southern pole. And the southern pole isn't really impressive, but it's nice seeing more of that, more of the world. But also, more importantly, is it shows the uh, like a map of uh, Gidi Prime, and that was really cool. And it's really cool. You see, um, there's Harco City and um, just a bunch of different places there, and that that's neat. And then they show the planet, a map of the planet Caladan, and um, and I think that's the entire the entire planet, and which makes sense, of course, because that's where the main um, that's where the main story takes place. You know, that's where the Atreides live. But still, it's really really cool to see. And it's not like we only see this; it also um, expands on um, or shows us like um, the Gurney and Duck and Idaho's story and why they hate the Harkonnens so much. Uh, we see uh, Duck and Idaho going to the planet Gnaz to train to become a swordsman. They, um, there's also this other time where they go to where um, uh, Liet Kynes, son of Pardot Kynes, 
the planetologists who um, <clears throat> it shows and it, like he goes to briefly to Seleucus Secundus and we see, and he sees the um, you know where they the Sardaukar trained and that's all cool you know basically there's just a lot of cool stuff that really helps expand a lot on the the uh, on the overall universe and we see a lot more and I, I thought it was really exciting and cool and stuff and, um, eventually um, <clears throat> like yeah it only exists because it's cool but it is cool and even more cooler than the Butlerian Jihad in the uh, Legends of Dune trilogy because it doesn't really raise all sorts of questions and so forth and when you begin to connect it with the other other uh, installments and overall it's just a great fun enjoyable ser enjoyable trilogy that you know unlike the uh, first and first trilogy leave you know it closes all of the plot threads it doesn't leave any questions or any other stuff that needs to be feels like it needs to be answered or anything it's just overall a great trilogy final rating five stars i felt it was much better told the b plot about the fremen and so forth was much more interesting mainly because it's the people they're talking about people that we know or that that are people that we've met and overall it's just i just really enjoyed it anyway um till next time I am your host, and until continuing Dune Month, uh, well, see ya.